So we're starting the morning off with a noodle breakfast and after that we're going for a walk in the market so join us today Okay, the noodles have arrived and they've been selling these noodles for the past 50 years or more and this is how it looks like so it's basically just a mix of rice and uh, yellow noodles and it comes with siumai additionally if you want to order that my nephew from the States is eating, it's called bangkung. It's like a rice noodle with, or like a meat and some vegetables. Ah, okay. So my nephew from the States is having bangkung with some M. Everyone else is having just some noodles. Okay, so let's do a taste test. So early morning with some noodle soup. You can't go wrong with that. Let's try this out. I want to mix the uh, yellow noodle with the rice noodles. Or rather the egg noodles with the rice noodles and see how this tastes. So it's piping hot, super duper hot. Mm. Mm. So the broth is really, really thick. Right, like very nice broth. And it really perks you, I'm giving you that energy in the morning. The char siu is pretty much like the ones back home uh, in, the, in your wonton noodles. Well marinated, and I think this is the, the highlight of the noodle soup. They have like pork ribs, so let me just show you that. They have these pork ribs uh, that they included, just a single bit. Mm. Very tender, the pork ribs. I'm gonna do a taste test for the soup, the siu mai, Vietnamese siu mai. It looks more like a meatball to me, so it looks something like this siu mai. Mm. Yeah. Pretty much like a meatball. Quite strange the taste. A little bit more gamey than the siu mai in Singapore. It's a very strong gamey taste. So the strong gamey taste is probably due to the fact that the meats here are like organic. Uh, they really get it from the farm, fresh from the farm, uh, early in the morning. And the meat here is super fresh. Rather everything here is super fresh because just one kilometer off the city center are all the farms where they grow the vegetables and the meat. So it's pretty good. Funny. Every time we eat, right, there'll be the lottery seller coming to sell lottery. So, yep, somewhat obligated to buy a couple of uh, lottery tickets. It seems like everyone knows everyone in the village, and yeah, they are, they're not they don't really hard sell you on the lottery tickets, but people just naturally buy the lottery tickets when they come to approach the table. A little bit of a community spirit right here. So I just found that this shop also sells wonton noodles, and the lady is actually making it as you order. So just take a look. Alright, so she's actually making it while you order. Okay, so she actually makes the dumplings as you order. So uh, in Singapore, they actually make the dumplings before you order. And when you come, they, really, they will just cook it and serve it to you. But here, they actually make it while you order. So it's really made to order. So really fresh wonton noodles right here. So we are now in the market after breakfast and as you can see there are lots of people just having breakfast, uh, buying groceries, there are plastic wares, rice, uh, you can buy anything and everything under the sun including live chickens and livestock so it's much fresher than Whole Foods. This place has it live right, it's organic, it's live and just take, check out the variety of vegetables that you can get here. So the land here is also very fertile. Uh, you can you can literally get everything and anything. Let's take a look at this. So these are rice crackers, and they are barbecuing the rice crackers over the charcoal. And these ladies probably have been doing it for decades as well. So very interesting. There's a dessert or a drink store here, and they are selling some fresh cakes and pastries as well. So these are all the desserts, and this one here has all the fruit. And they are quite amused to see that they are actually tourists in this part of Vietnam. So not many tourists actually get to come to this province because it's a really
really small province outside of uh, Ho Chi Minh, about two hours away. Super duper vibrant environment here. Uh, yeah, and you can buy anything and everything, including lingerie. So the, the lady selling lingerie was just laughing at us. <laughs> it's quite crazy. The, the, the atmosphere here is quite crazy. Very hectic and stressful if you're not used to crowds. So as you guys know that inflation is kind of like a global issue. So as you can see, right, the main form of savings here is gold. So you can see it's like 8 a.m. in the morning and the goldsmith behind me is already packed with customers. Uh, there are people doing alterations for their jewelry. There are people just buying bullion. So yep, Asians are pretty much obsessed with collecting gold because it's a very good form of preserving wealth, right? So just take a look. Jesus Christ, you can get uh, aquarium fish off a motorbike at the market in the morning. Oh my god. Vietnam is still full of surprises. I thought I've seen it all but uh, apparently not, right? So aquarium fish on the back of a motorbike. Okay, we're done with walking the market and from the prices I saw, right, you can buy like three pieces of corn for like 10 cents. Uh, avocados were going for like 20 cents a piece. A lot of the prices here are still very affordable. Uh, only the processed stuff like the cooked foods that like the noodles we ate, uh, I think the prices have, for that has gone up quite a fair bit. Now, we are now having coffee at this coffee joint right here. The Vietnamese drip coffee. It's very famous of, of, all over the world. And uh, this is really an authentic uh, cafe that the Vietnamese people hang out. So I'm gonna have some iced coffee, although I don't normally drink coffee, but uh, because I'm in Vietnam, I, I think it's no excuse. I have to have at least one cup early in the morning. Now, the funny thing is right opposite, if you guys can actually listen to the noises of the birds, uh, the building behind me actually houses swallows that produces an Asian delicacy called bird's nest, which is basically solidified uh, swallow sliver. Uh, I don't know why Asian people like to drink it. It has no nutritional benefits and uh, apparently it gives good complexion and health and stuff but I highly doubt that issue. So yep, there's a house that uh, house their nest and they will actually collect this bird's nest of, uh, which is swallow sliver. Uh, and they will process it at a nearby, uh, like a factory or some, some private residence. So quite strange, uh, but yep, it's just in the middle of the city and uh, someone actually farming solo sliver. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what drip coffee is or Vietnamese drip coffee is, it looks something like this. So the top part is they, where they put the coffee powder and at the bottom they'll put a very thick layer of condensed milk. Uh, they'll let the coffee drip down and after the coffee has dripped down, you will pour it into a cup of ice where you will get the coffee iced coffee which is called Cafe Suda. It's very very thick and very very strong. So I'm gonna let the ice melt a little bit because otherwise this is it's gonna be it's much thicker than an espresso shot. So you have to let the ice melt before you drink it. Otherwise it will be it'll be too too thick for you to drink and you will probably not be able to sleep at night. So let me just wait for the ice to melt before I do a taste test. Time for a taste test. Oh, it's super strong and super thick. Uh, so I think I gotta let the ice melt a little bit more. But it's very, very tasty. So I don't normally drink coffee, but uh, for here I'm gonna drink it because it's really tasty. It tastes like a vanilla-ish kind of flavor. Yeah, it's very, very sweet as well. But the coffee taste is still very strong, even though it's been diluted slightly by the ice. Uh, yeah, but you gotta taste it if you are ever in Vietnam or you have a Vietnamese cafe in your neighborhood. Yeah, go get a Vietnamese coffee and have a try. It's really, really tasty. Just, just coming for a coffee. Oh my god, we bought so many lottery tickets. We were, we were swamped by all the lottery ticket sellers. Oh my god. Okay, so that was a very good coffee. And after coffee, we took a short drive over to Mito province. And we're going for a boat ride on the Mekong River. So for those of you who are poor in geography, the Mekong River is actually like the 
lifeline of the Southeast Asian countries like Thailand, Laos, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam. Uh, it really, it, it's actually the irrigation or the water supply for most of the rice fields that are found in this region. So, okay, so some eco eco tourism here. We're going up on a boat for a short boat ride, right? and I'll take hours. you guys along the way. What? It is three hours. It is three hours. Are you serious? Oh my god, yeah. that's a long boat ride. Right? Here you can really see the economic growth of Vietnam. There are uh, several uh, riverside villas over there by this Mekong River, and each villa is worth about four to five hundred thousand dollars. So the uh, economic progression of Vietnam over the last couple of years or the last couple of decades has really, really progressed. Uh, even though they're still developing right now, but you can see it's really, really lovely the villas over there. And uh, yeah, I think the country is progressing really, really fast. Okay, so we have come to our first stop of the tour. So the boat is uh, just parked over here. And uh, we are coming here to a place, I'm not sure, this looks like a cafe or coffee stop. Uh, it's only been about 15 minutes and it's already the first stop. So let's see what this place brings. Oh, thank it. So, are you guys having fun? Yes, I'm selling the honey. <laughs> okay, so it's really eco tourism. Uh, that bunch of bees that you guys have just saw. Uh, apparently it feeds on the pollen of the longan uh, fruit. So, I don't know, longans are pretty sweet. So I guess the honey must have some sort of a special flavor. And uh, oh my god. This is a thing, you know? huge fish. What? It's for eating? Yeah. Oh my god. If you order... <laughs> it's just a tilapia. It's yeah. just a tilapia this. fish. So it's huge. Oh my god. Okay, yummy face. Very good. Mm. <laughs> okay. Eat it, ang ang. Eat it, ang ang. Okay, I'm gonna try. So the first stop they have banana fritters, which are deep fried bananas to it. It's very crispy. Mm. Very crunchy and again they put some sesame seeds on it um, and it's very sweet. They have caramelized um, the entire banana um, till it becomes like a potato chip and it's really crispy. Mm. Pretty good. So on these stops they will normally promote to use stuff and here they are selling uh, uh, honey or bee related products. So besides the banana fritters which they are selling for like a dollar or two per pack, they also serve you honey so that you can buy the honey if you want. So, mm, nice. So it's uh, this is honey mixed with lime juice and everyone's having a little bit of it. So they sell the bee pollen, they sell royal jelly and other bee related products. So yeah, this is what uh, most tours will consist of. They give you some sort of a boat ride for not a very high price and along the way they'll try to earn some commissions by promoting all these products to you but uh, these are decent products that uh, are of good quality so depending on the trip that you take around Southeast Asia you will always have these sorts of trips uh, some of them basically they are just like tourist traps uh, this one here is pretty genuine, pretty authentic where the products are actually good So we'll be supporting them a little bit. We'll be buying a few packets of snacks and maybe a bottle or two of honey and uh, giving it to some of the relatives that didn't come along for this trip. Another way they make money is uh, they can actually let you take photos with uh, like some wildlife. 
and I believe this is like a Burmese python. Okay. So it's pretty huge. It's about maybe five feet. And yep, that's my son there. I think he's really nervous. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Okay, the next stop or the next store is uh, these products here. They are made of uh, coconut products, coconut related products, coconut husks. Uh, coconut shells and they polish it into usable utensils such as bowls, ladders and uh, chopsticks so pretty interesting this echo tour okay next stop is a coconut uh, products uh, process area and we get to try these uh, coconut candies for free and uh, yeah this one here is mixed with like pandan leaf oh it's very fragrant mm. uh, oh it's very sweet Basically, it's coconut sugar mixed with uh, pandan extract that explains the green color and wow, there's uh, many many tourists, local tourists here So the process starts like this They will basically de the coconut using this tool here You can see it's a very sharp blade and they will start the process here Okay, so once the husk is removed they will actually peel out the coconut meat and put it into this grinder and they will grind it into shreds, coconut shreds and then the next two machines they will extract out the coconut milk and the sugars as well and then they will come to this process here so as you can see there's a very hot charcoal fire just below down there cooking up the formula and once it thickens and solidifies they will bring it here where they will put it into a mold and after they mold the coconut sugar it will become the candy that we just ate just now so that's how the process of making coconut candy is and here this lady behind me she's uh, wrapping up the coconut candy into uh, these packets down here like so okay you can buy them probably cost like a buck or so uh, they're very affordable and very tasty they're very healthy as well because obviously there are no preservatives and everything is done fresh so this is the coconut section of the echo tour pretty interesting So I just realized that they actually use the coconut husk as fuel to heat up the coconut sugar on top So literally this is very very eco-friendly and nothing of the coconut goes to waste So oh, I'm pretty impressed by this operation right here, it's really sustainable Okay, as we are walking uh, back to the boat area You can see on top of me there are actually longan trees And wow, I've never seen longan trees in my life because I've been staying in the city all my life so First time I've seen longans uh, not in a supermarket. Oh, Pretty cool. Okay, of all the interesting crops they have, they have this over here. You can see the red color ball there. It's called a yak fruit. And once upon a time, this yak fruit was actually marketed as a super food and it was packaged and you know bottled into very nice bottles and sold for a lot of money uh, to Western countries. I'm not sure if it's really a super fruit, but it grows pretty uh, wildly down here. Pretty, that's pretty abundant down here. So that's the yak fruit uh, in its natural habitat. So just take a look. Okay, so it's pretty hilarious because. Uh, in the middle of the tour, while, while we were shopping, we were invited to have some tropical fruits and to listen to some traditional Vietnamese songs. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, one of the weirdest tours I've ever gone through. And I'm not sure why there's a bunch of fake roses here as well. But, uh, oh, you're supposed to buy roses for them as a token of appreciation. So. It's kind of like the Siam Tiu in Singapore where you buy like the sash for the ladies, right? So it's pretty much the same system here. It's quite hilarious. So, okay, gonna enjoy some music. So, not really my taste of music, but I have to put up with it. It's pretty hilarious. So, you're supposed to put the money in the rolls like this. And present it to the singers. I'm, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay.
Okay, we're done with the singing entertainment and now we are being ferried away with a golf cart to another location, probably quite a distance away. And yep, I don't know where, where we are being uh, like carted to but yeah, let's go check it out. For those of you guys who like to eat ice kacang and those uh, desserts, right? This is how your atapji looks like. It actually comes from this fruit down here. And uh, yep, you get the atapji from this fruit. It grows in the mangroves. Yep, in case you guys haven't seen it before, that, that is that is atapji. Okay, we have made another stop. And uh, as you can see from the back, it's a lot of, uh, I don't know, these are kind of, it's not really a farm, uh, but people just grow a lot of different crops uh, around their houses here. Uh, there's bananas, there's like the pamelos, uh, some lime plants as well and yep from left to right it's just basically fruits fruits and more fruits so yeah just take a look at this it's a small pamelo right here so you can find some on the floor and on the ground as well because it's just it grows so rampant here that it's not really valued very much so yeah you can actually just come here and pluck a few I, I'm sure the the locals here wouldn't mind So turns out that the stop that we made via that golf cart are these little sampans or these wooden boats uh, and we are just basically having a little boat right down the river. It is very unstable, I can feel the boat almost capsizing from left to right and uh, it's quite scary because some of these guys in front of me can't swim so <laughs> I really hope this boat doesn't capsize because we have all our electronics and stuff on us as well we are flowing down uh, a small little stream this is the Venice of Vietnam <laughs> Passing the mangroves, you can actually see the atapji fruits. They are growing somewhat wild, I guess, uh, on the mangroves. So you know that this is truly like the authentic fruits. They are like 100% organic. There you go. You can see the very big atapji fruits there. And I believe they, they use these boats to actually harvest this atapji. Oh, it's nipa palm in English. So it's very interesting. And then you get a lot of the local tourists. These are the uh, local Vietnamese tourists from other provinces. So Vietnam is a pretty big country as well. So a lot of uh, domestic tourism happens. And uh, this place, not too many foreign tourists at this time of the year. I saw a group of Japanese and some Western tourists as well. But uh, generally, it's actually quite low season right now. So we're having a pretty good time because it's not as crowded as it would be during the high seasons. Okay, very relaxing uh, mangrove boat ride. Super awesome. Hello. <laughs> hey, hey, snake, snake. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> and the boat like capsizing. Oh my god. Hello. 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 So we're done with all the uh, echo entertainment and now we're back on the big bump boat. I don't know again where is our next stop gonna be but just follow along and go with the flow. Okay, so it seems we are venturing out to the bigger sea area and we've been advised to put on the life jacket. Jacket. So this is how it looks. Pretty funny. Let's see what the rest of this cruise brings. We have come to another pit stop and this time we are at a crocodile farm. But uh, before we take a look at the crocodiles, we're gonna have lunch first. So it's pretty much the same. They have all these little bazaars and little pop-up stands with uh, dessert, snacks and whatnot. So yeah, lots of stuff here. There's some kids feeding the fish in the fish pond. 
and uh, yeah, it's uh, basically all activities for both kids and adults. So uh, I don't know what this bring. This is gonna bring probably that's the crocodile, but I will I will check out the crocodiles later. We're just gonna have lunch first. Okay, yeah, another interesting experience. We have the Korean or Japanese style sitting where it's on the floor. It's gonna be a big problem for me because I'm the big guy. It's hard for me to just kind of get onto these little stools. But yep, it's a it's an experience. So after a 30 minute wait because of a very big crowd, our, some of our food has arrived. And just take a look at this. Oh, look at the size of this fish. This fish in a stand. And what is this? Catfish. Uh. Look like catfish. No. Right, and huge fish. Oh my god. Okay, so this is actually ale, a fresh water ale, and you're supposed to dip it with this sauce. Oh, tastes like fish. Mm. Oh, there's a lot of bones here, Major. The bones cannot be eaten. Oh, save me! Okay, more stuff have arrived and this is a coconut salad with prawns so apparently this is very very tasty Let's take a look at this Okay, we've got like fish or prawn crackers and some kang kong vegetables Okay, this is gonna be a sumptuous lunch Okay, this fish is quite unique So you need to scrape off the fish meat put it into rice paper and uh, you can put some noodles and some herbs as well and then you roll it all up in the rice paper and it becomes like a fish spring roll and that's tamarind sauce you can opt for tamarind sauce or just a regular fish sauce okay i got a feeling this is gonna be good <laughs> okay i'm gonna do a taste test for you guys but this is very very vietnamese flavor yeah i don't think many like vietnamese restaurants overseas will have such a variety okay tamarind sauce only this place has this uh this Mm. Very fresh. All the vegetables and herbs probably just plucked from the backyard. The fish is actually real in a pond behind me. So the fish is very fresh as well. Very tasty, very delicious. So this is very special. This is actually prawn crackers with the coconut shoot. So typically they use bamboo shoot. But in this area they actually use uh, coconut shoot. Which is quite strange. I thought it was coconut meat. So let me just get rid of the prawn's head and let me have a taste of this. Hmm. Okay, so if you guys have had um, papaya salad or mango salad in Thailand, it tastes pretty much like that. Um, there's definitely fish sauce, some sour stuff, probably vinegar or pickled vegetables. It's a very refreshing dish. We're gonna have one more. Awesome. Yeah. So this is the cartilage portion of pigs here. Apparently I have to dip with some sauce. Okay. That tastes like cartilage. Okay, so this is where the crocodiles are. And all these people here are feeding the crocodiles. As you can see, they have some sort of a meat hanging on a pole. And they are using it as a fishing rod to feed the crocodiles. I wonder who's gonna go next. Okay, so that was pretty funny. The guy was literally trolling the crocodiles, spinning the meat round and round. And obviously, crocodiles are not like um, very active animals, so they were just chilling, waiting to be fed. But that happened, so it's really funny. It's a dollar to feed the crocodiles, but I don't think I'm gonna do it. So even at the petrol kiosk, we're not spared by the lottery sellers. 
So this kid just literally sold us some, some more lottery tickets. Oh my god. So done with our little boat tour of the Mekong River. We are back in the village. And this is the my father's-in-law's place. And that's where we had our wedding, uh, wedding dinner as well. At that time, about maybe 15 years ago, the wedding only cost me, I think, 5,000 Sing dollars. So that's like three or four grand US. And this is the road leading to the house. It's very narrow. And during those days when they just bought this house, the land itself is only $3,000. Uh, right now, it's worth a lot, a lot more, more than 10 times over. And uh, the, at the time when they bought the land, right, it was very strange because I was wondering how come there are actually tombstones uh, in front of the piece of land. So why would you want to stay on a piece of land that is opposite some tombstones? And at that time, 15 years ago, there were only about maybe three or four tombs. Uh, right now, after 15 years and coming back, I think there must be at least 50 over tombs just across the, the land where the house is built. Uh, so previously, we didn't have these <laughs> walls that actually remind me of prison walls. It was just a fence, uh, but yeah, they did some modifications to the house. So alright, so I'll take you guys in to take a look, but I'll show you guys the uh, outside of the house. It's actually facing uh, paddy fields or rice fields. So all across here used to be just paddy fields, uh, except for now, it is uh, filled up with tombs. So, uh, there must be uh, a, a lot of elderly population that have uh, demise over the last 10 years. Okay, let's head in and take a look. Okay, so about 15 years back, uh, all this place already existed. Uh, they just built this new shelter outside so that they can have like dinners and family gatherings. So as you can see, there's a group of people having some afternoon beer. And it's pretty normal here. Uh, they finish work at about 3, 4 o'clock. Some of them do farming. Uh, others do other sorts of work in the city, which is about uh, 10 minutes away. And uh, yeah, so this whole structure was built 15 years ago for just about $10,000. Right, of course, construction costs have gone up a fair bit. And right now, to build something like this would be at least fifty to $70,000. So that you can really feel the effects of inflation all over the world. Right, so imagine this, 15 years ago, it only cost 10,000 to build this structure that has a living room, a hall, and a couple of bedrooms inside. So let's go in and take a look at the internal of the structure. You can see they drink a lot of alcohol here. Okay, so this is the living room. Uh, they have these very antique looking chairs that weigh at least 100 kilos. And here you have the dining area, but they don't really use it anymore because they just have a dining area outside. So this is like the family altar where they have their prayers and uh, you know photos of the ancestors. Okay, we have some bedrooms over here, but I shall not go in and intrude in the privacy there are two bedrooms over here as you can see one one of my nephews is actually inside here hello Otto hello. <laughs> and Otto is actually from San Jose right and he's back for a visit uh when how old, how old were you when you left for San Jose I think you were only a small boy right about six, about six right yeah so at six years old his his family moved to San Jose and they're back for, they haven't been back for four and a half years and now they're back for four weeks right? two weeks that's two weeks oh no and they're going back uh, at the same time as me which is next this coming weekend i think they're flying off so yep two bedrooms and yep one more bedroom over here so this leads to like a backyard area and as you can see the view behind is also pretty good so they the weather is very hot right so they just have uh, a toilet here on the on the right and some paddy fields behind the weather is very hot so they can actually do their laundry here okay this is my sister-in-law it's uh, one of the aunties taking an afternoon nap and this one here is a kitchen so the family does 
a food business. During the morning, they will be cooking uh, fried gold sticks here. As you can see the super long chopstick, I think. Yeah, they will be they will be using like some super long chopsticks to fry the uh, dough sticks, and then they sell that in the market. So it's pretty funny because this family recipe has been exported to the US as well, and so they run a food business. Uh, part of the another part of the family runs a food business in the US, yeah, and then these are more toilets here for showering and whatnot. And yep, that's pretty much the indoor compound. Let me show you another part outside which is also very interesting. Okay, so sometime uh, in the last five years or seven years, they had a second structure built here. Uh, it's like an outpost from the main house uh, because my father-in-law wanted his own privacy. And then one of my sister-in-laws was actually living in this little structure uh, for a while as well. So uh, let me show you the interesting area that I was talking about. Okay, so they have a second backyard here and this is where my father-in-law and his friends chill out. Uh, I think they have some drinks here as well sometimes. Coffee, tea, you know, some alcohol. As you can see from the beer cans here, alcohol is a very popular beverage in Vietnam. And I think that's my father-in-law chilling inside. So let's just go in and just get him to say hello. So this is his room. Okay, they have air conditioning, a fridge and everything. Hello. Yeah, this is my sister-in-law who moved to San Jose. Not very yeah, glamorous. Hello, hello. Yeah, this is my father-in-law. Hello. Yeah. He's quite old now, so he's just chilling. Bad ba Len, what's this? Bad uh, No, no. What, this one? Uh, uh, wine. Huh? Wine. Wine, yeah. Wine. Oh, medicinal wine, yeah. yeah. What do they put inside? They put... Um, got some vegetables. Uh, the, the, the herbs, ah. Tea leaves, ah. Mm. Okay. And uh, some ginseng. And ginseng. <laughs> okay, so they have this. They have my wife's photo hanging down there. And this is the kitchen area. That uh, is like a mini pantry. And they have a little bathroom here as well. So it's like a self-contained studio apartment away from the main house. Okay, so this is the final area here that I want to show you. And here they actually burn uh, rice husk. And after they burn the rice husks, you can see they actually use it as fertilizer. And this is a very interesting pond. So they spent a couple of thousand dollars to actually dig up this pond as well. You can see there's a fishing rod here. So this pond actually serves uh, two purposes. One is they actually raise ducks for food um, at the back of the pond. Right, and they also have uh, some fish inside, some tilapia fish inside. As you can see, they use uh, like the used bread, I mean the leftover bread that has gone stale to feed the fish. Right, and basically whenever they need to have a fresh fish for their meals, uh, there are thousands of tilapia actually here. So it's basically an unlimited lifetime supply of tilapia fish. So yep, right here. Uh, it's just this very nice pond area that's within the compound itself as well. Within that, that the walls of this little compound that they bought a long time ago. Right, let me see if I can go to the other side of the compound. Uh, it's very interesting as well. Uh, as a city folk, right, we never get to experience uh, the lifestyle of the, the village like this. So coming here is like a, a, a tourist attraction to me, you know, something that I would like to explore. Yeah, so in front of the house, these are bags after bags of rice husks, as you can see, right? And they use it as fuel for the cooking. Uh, I'm not sure why they use rice husk. Probably because it's just a cheap form of fuel and they have a lot of it. Okay, I'm trying to go to the other side to show you the other side of the land. The land stretches out quite far, about maybe 20 to 30 meters. So let's see if there's another exit there because I can't walk via this way because of the weeds and the... I don't know what some they're growing roses and all kinds of different uh, vegetables and stuff. So let me try if I can see if I can get to the other side to show you something interesting over there. Okay, so in order to cut through this garden, we have to better through this weed come vegetation patch and as you can see there's a lot a lot of vegetation some of which i have no no clue what they are uh, some of which are vegetables 
But for the most part, I think they are weeds. Uh. Your brother never cut away the, all the weeds, uh, dear. Oh my god. They are so lazy, the brother. <laughs> okay, let's head over to this side. Something I want to show you guys. Okay, so after battling with all the weeds, and I have confirmed that they are actually weeds, there's this structure here, and it's actually the, the tomb of uh, my wife's grandma and my wife's mum. So, this is one of the tombs. This one is grandma, right? Yeah. This is your mum. Mm. And the two outside? Father, father. Father, and uncles. Mm. Yeah, so there are four tombs within the compound. <laughs> this one has been reserved by my father-in-law. They're gonna, they're gonna export one tomb from the other side <laughs> to, to put it here so that it can be beside the grandmom. So, pretty funny, yeah. So they can never sell this portion of the land. So if they want to sell the land, right, they have to cut one portion. <laughs> because this, I mean, who, who's gonna buy the area where there are tombstones, right? Okay, so this is my mother-in-law. She passed away about, how long? Five years ago. Five years, so long already. About five years ago. And yep. So this is the tombstone. We're heading back to the main area of the house. So it's pretty big, huh? the land. And once upon a time, we just got it at like such a good price. Yep, so we got proper uh, farming. You know, you get some wild tapiocas growing here. There's a little papaya tree growing there. And uh, I don't know why they grow all these palm trees here for. Or is it coconut trees? I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, these are crops of like no value at all. <laughs> so uh, they have other businesses. They have the, their food business. And then her brother is actually in, uh, into pro real estate right now. So he can't really be bothered about the farming. And that basically explains the lack of care for this piece, this plot of land here. Anyway, that was a short tour of the house. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's uh, an experience that not many people would get. And uh, yeah, I'm quite lucky and appreciative to have the chance uh, to, you know, be in this area and get myself immersed in this environment for the last two days. Typical activity for the afternoon, the Vietnamese siesta. So let's try the coconut, fresh coconut. Yeah. Ooh, it, the juice is slightly warm. <laughs> warm coconut juice. Sour. It's a bit sour because it probably uh, fermented a little bit already. So any more fermentation, it will become toddy. It's like a coconut alcohol, sort of like rum. Thankfully, it hasn't gone to that stage yet. Mm. Okay, so we're ending off the day in a cafe. So you wouldn't believe it, right? Uh, after what I've shown you guys about the village and everything, it looks like it's uh, very backwards. Uh, it looks very old school. But just take a look at this cafe. It's ultra modern and you have drinks like this. It's so nice. And all kinds of other beverages. So yeah, actually the town is getting a lot more prosperous over the last 5-6 years and uh, things are becoming very modern and of course thanks to the internet uh, you know, all the foreign trends are also starting to catch up here. So yeah, that's all from me today and I'll see you guys tomorrow when we head back to Ho Chi Minh City.